Welcome to this webinar, which provides insights into the development of children's physical skills and their sensory development. These insights take account of research as well as inspector's findings in early learning and care settings and the advice provided by inspectors to promote improvement. Early childhood is a crucial time for a child's development. This webinar explores children's physical skills and how these skills develop early in their lives. It also explores children's sensory development. While this webinar focuses on physical and sensory development, each aspect of a child's development is closely linked to every other one. For example, you will have noticed that a child's physical growth accompanies or often stimulates rapid changes in a child's cognitive and language skills. In fact, all physical development has an effect on a child's emotional, cognitive and social development. As a child grows and learns what their, bodies can, what their body can do, the child gains self-confidence which promotes social and emotional development. Think of how excited a child is when they learn to stand on one leg. The child will do this again and again. You will praise the child and this in turn will promote his her confidence and give encouragement for further development. Typically, physical development, also known as motor development, follows a predictable pattern. So, for example, physically between birth and three, a child can typically double in height and quadruple in weight. Sensory development refers to the development of sight, hearing, taste and so on. Of course, a child will move his her body and manipulate objects using their physical body in combination with their senses. For example, as a child crawls, they rely on their sight. As a child dances, they rely on their hearing to listen to music. When in early learning and care settings, inspectors focus on the settings approaches to supporting and promoting children's physical and sensory development. Inspectors evaluate the range and type of opportunities provided for children to be physically active and to have sensory experiences. In high quality settings, inspectors note the value for children of engaging in activities which simultaneously engage the physical body and the senses. One activity which simultaneously involves motor development and the senses is climbing a tree. We will now consider the key areas of motor development and skills, for example, the core strengths upper body strengths, postural control, growth and fine motor coordination and skills. Firstly, core strengths refers to the muscles in the body that surround and support the spine. These include the outer core, the abdominals, and the inner core, the muscles that surround the hips, pelvic floor, the diaphragm and the spine. You may wonder why is it important to have a strong core? Well, a strong core helps a child to sustain energy levels, maintain attention, maintain an upright, stable posture and have a good sense of balance. Whereas a toddler may wobble and sway and he, she moves as he, she moves, an older child, due to their better developed core muscle control, will be more stable and more able to remain upright. A child with poor inner core strength may present with a slumped posture and poor balance. This will impact on the capacity to be alert and sustain attention. The child is not aware of the challenges arising from poor core strength, 
but the effect on the child's ability to engage with certain learning and development tasks can be quite negative. Inspectors frequently note that it is really important for children to have opportunities to develop their core strengths through physical exercise, including crawling, jumping, rolling, and skipping. Now we'll consider the importance of upper body strength. Upper body strength is dependent on the muscles of the arms, chest, upper body, and shoulders. Strong develop upper body muscles allow for precise fluid movements of the upper body and arms. For a child to be able to write, his, her upper body muscles need to be well developed. Inspectors frequently note that children enjoy opportunities to make big dramatic movements with their upper body. And as they do this, they are developing strength. In addition, where high quality provision is noted, inspectors frequently recognize that the children have many opportunities to make big, big movements, such as climbing, when they dance, and when they recite and act out rhymes and songs, and as they swing their arms. Now, let's think about postural control. It is important for babies and young children to have appropriate opportunities to develop their postural control. This will be supported when they crawl, roll, hold up their heads, wobble, and eventually they will walk upright. In early learning and care settings, inspectors recommend that children have opportunities to swing, to roll on the floor, for example, while pretending to be a snake, or to roll outside, down a slope or in a grassy area. Jumping and skipping provide similar fun-filled and beneficial experiences. Gross motor skills and gross motor coordination. Gross motor skills refer to the movement and coordination of large muscle groups. We will engage, will, will you engage in any gross motor skills today? Yes, of course you will. You will walk around, you may run, cycle or swim. When a child kicks a ball, he or she is using gross motor skills so that they can move and coordinate them in a good manner. Fine motor skills and strengths involve the, the mo movement and use of smaller muscles, such as the muscles in the fingers, hands and wrists. Sewing with a needle requires fine motor skills. And when a child draws with a crayon, he or she is also using fine motor skills. It is really important though to note that gross motor development is the basis for fine motor development. This is essential. It is essential that the child's gross motor skills, core strengths and shoulder stability are well developed. Once this space is in place, the child needs plenty of practice grasping objects and manipulating them in order to develop strong, capable fingers. So put simply, a child needs to be able to make big movements of the arms, shoulders and the upper body before he or she can be expected to write letters and numbers. A parent may ask, why isn't my child learning to write letters and numbers? The answer to this is that as if a strong base is, isn't prepared, this type of work poses significant challenges and is not age or developmentally appropriate for the child. If a child is not able to carry out a fine motor activity such as threading beads, tying a shoelace or forming a letter, the best way to support this child is to go back to practice gross motor development rather than persisting to practice the fine motor skill. For this reason, inspectors occasionally need to advise settings to provide opportunities for gross motor development and playful activities involving making and working with Play-Doh and creative materials before children proceed to formal writing activities. So now let's consider the senses. First, 
will define each sense and then we will consider how we can support children to have experiences which engage their senses. First, we'll consider touch or tactile sense. Our sense of touch tells us so much. A child receives important information about the environment through touch receptors, which are all over our skin from head to toe. For example, the child feels temperature, pressure, movement and pain. Inspectors often note the benefit of children touching and exploring different te textures such as sand, sandpaper, felt, silk or having fun when using a mystery bag to guess an object by feeling it. Then of course our sense of sight enables us to see and helps us to orient ourselves in the environment and investigate our surroundings to determine our location relative to all things around us. Hearing and listening, also known as auditory sense. Hearing is an important sense that connects us to our environment and is the precursor to interaction, speaking, reading and writing. Inspectors often note the critical importance of developing children's listening skills and in some inspection reports, specific advice is provided to settings to improve practice in this area. Smell and taste. They work closely together, as you will know when you have a cold. They give us useful information about our environment and smell might alert us to danger or evoke memories, both pleasant and unpleasant. For example, the smell and taste of Christmas. There is no other way to understand the concept of sweet or sour than to taste the food by yourself. Spatial awareness or proprioception. Proprioception is the ability to sense or to know what different parts of our body are doing without even looking at them. Proprioception regulates how much force you need to use when completing a task, such as peeling a boiled egg without crushing it, holding a baby chick without squeezing it too hard, or writing with a pen without ripping the paper or breaking the pencil. And finally, the sense of balance also referred to as vestibular sense. It is the sense of balance, also known as vestibular, helps us to navigate effectively through our environment with ease and control. It is probably the most powerful and most essential of all our senses. The sense of balance can only be skilled and refined through whole body physical movement. In early learning and care settings, where high quality provision is noted, inspectors frequently observe that children have opportunities to climb, use balance beams, jump with two feet and then with one foot, stand on one leg and play games such as hopscotch. Finally, to bring it all together, we must consider sensory integration. All of the physical skills and senses are interconnected. This is called sensory integration. It is crucial to understand that the more senses that are used and activated, the more accurate the information you have about your environment. Inspectors promote the great benefits of active learning, which enables children to be fully engaged and to have more than one sense experience. They need to hear it, see it, touch it, and where possible even smell and taste it. In other words, have a whole body experience. If a body memory is created, the learning is more meaningful and lasting. For a child, everything is a first and the world is full of abstract concepts, such as water is wet. This has to be felt to create a body experience. To have held a kg of flour in your hands while weighing it for baking 
will ma make it much easier to understand the abstract concept of weight later in school. As adults, we have an important role in supporting the development of children's physical skills. Parents, preschool practitioners and school teachers all play a pivotal role. Within this series of webinars, there is practical advice on the activities and routines which can support children's physical development. We hope that this presentation was useful for you to develop your awareness of the importance of the development of children's physical skills and sensory integration. Here is a list of further information and references which you may find interesting. If you have further queries, please contact us at insights underscore info at education.gov. Thank you very much.